Hello, my friend. Are you ready for a Jen Loves Reviews style review video? I know I am. I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, they're really fun. I just have to be inspired to do them. <laughs> And actually the inspiration for this video was what's up in makeup. Sometimes when I'm researching for what's up in makeup when I'm filming, I'm like, I really want to try that. And lately there's been some things at Sephora where I've really been interested. So we're going to try out four new products that are sold at Sephora. We're going to go over ingredients, talk about whether there's any skincare benefits built into the makeup. And we're going to do a full day wear test on the products to see how they perform. So if that sounds interesting, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. I've been trying these products for about a week, week and a half or so, so I already have developed some opinions about these that I'll be able to share with you at the end of the video. But I also want you to be able to see for yourself how they apply to see if they're gonna be right for you. So let me just show you what I purchased and what's on my face today. So we have first, very excited about this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Medium Coverage Liquid Foundation with Hyaluronic Acid. It is $44, it does come in 30 shades and on the Sephora website, it does say it has a 16 hour natural glow and it is buildable with medium coverage to hydrate smooth blur pores and brighten skin so we're going to be testing that today we're going to zoom up all close and personal i did buy this in shade 5 which is called neutral then we are going to be playing with the kosas 10 second eye gel watercolor eyeshadow it's 15 dollars. it does come in six shades they say it is a clean eyeshadow that glides on like gel watercolor to make your eyes instantly pop infused with liquid skincare for your lids and we are going to look at those claims to see whether it actually has liquid skincare in there then we have the cali ray come hell or high water volumizing tubing mascara and this is 24 dollars for a full size or 13 dollars for a mini size this has been out for a little while but is still labeled as new on sephora's website so i counted it as a newer product even though it's been out i think for like a month they say it is a clean volumizing tubing mascara that's zero smudge, water resistant, and long wearing. The vial is 100% recycled ocean plastic. And then finally, the other product that I really, really, really wanted to try, and the other two I just kind of bought to flesh out the look a little bit, but this one I was really excited about. This is the Rare Beauty Warm Wishes Effortless Bronzer Stick. It's $23. It comes in five shades, and I bought the shade Happy Soul, and this was difficult to find. It was sold out online when I went into my Sephora. Uh, they didn't have any left on the display, and I was like, oh, because I looked online and it did say that they were in stock. So I asked the person that worked there and she had to go into the back to get this for me. So this shade is particularly difficult to find. And I think it's because it's more cool tone than some of the other shades. They say it is a breakthrough bronzing stick. We'll see about that. For a quick visible sun kiss glow with a smooth seamless second skin finish, just swipe on, blend and go. So will this just swipe on and blend so that I can go because I got stuff to do. We're going to find out. The goal of today Today's look is to get that clean makeup look. So that's like a thing right now. It's just another name for the no makeup makeup look. And at the same time, I wanted to show you how these products perform. So I'm not going to do like all of the things because I want you to specifically be able to see the products in action. So for example, I'm not wearing eyeliner. Uh, I'm not wearing blush. I'm not wearing lipstick because we're not focusing on all of that. <laughs> we're focusing on just these products and really making a a clean, fresh look that just kind of brightens everything and enhances a bit without being overdone. So now we are going to go ahead and zoom in and I will show you how all of this applied to my face. All right, we are ready to get going. Now this is the ultimate question, to prime or not to prime? Because this is the thing is, any primer that I use is going to interact with the product and affect its performance in one way or another. And I know that people watching may have a different primer than what I'm using. So I'm just going to apply this directly over top of my skincare routine, which is a vitamin C serum and a sunscreen. And I will put them on the screen for you so you know which ones I used. And we're just gonna jump in with the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. But before we jump in, we need to make sure we are properly prepared with adequate protection. Protection for my hair. There we go, all right. We are in good shape. Rolling up those sleeves. 
So one thing I wanna note right away is the pump. I really like pumps on tubes like this. I find them to be very functional. The match isn't quite right. I feel like I'm just a little bit pinker than this, but we're gonna go with it. Why is it not? Come on. Okay, let's just go with what, what it's giving me and we'll see how it goes. Bloop, 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 bloop. So as I'm applying, I'm going to be talking about the ingredients that are in this. And this actually has more skincare ingredients than I typically see in a foundation, which is really nice. Now, how much of that skincare actually gets down into the skin? Who really knows? But the intention is good and it may be good for your skin. So starting off, they advertise hyaluronic acid and rose complex. So for hydrating and for reducing visible signs of fatigue for brighter, smoother looking skin. And then they have something called Bix Active. Bix Active. They say that visibly reduces shine and blurs the look of pores. So when you look at the ingredient list, one thing that's really nice is it does have water in the base like most foundations do, but then it also has the humectants to pull water into the skin. And then of course there's quite a few silicones and that's gonna act as an occlusive to lock that moisture into the skin. And already I think this makes my skin look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> It's freaking gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love the way that it looks. And I'm already done blending, like for real. I'll bring it down a little bit, but that was a lot faster than I expected. Usually it takes me a while, and I think it's because it is such a thin formula. It just moves very quickly and very easily. So what else I wanted to mention about this, because I'm done <laughs> applying it already, is that it does have apple fruit water in it. And I know I do make fun sometimes of brands like Juice Beauty who use lots and lots of fruit. I call it Mots for Tots in skincare, but apple fruit extract actually is a moisturizing ingredient, but it's a water version, so I'm not sure. I feel like it would be like a diluted version of the apple extract that they use in a lot of products. As far as the rose flower oil and water that are in here, honestly, like I wish that they had used rose hip seed oil rather than the rose flower water because the rose flower water is the leaves and the petals where the rose hip, the seed of the rose. So it gives different properties and rose hip seed oil is so much better for your skin than the rose oil extracts. Now the rose extracts can be anti antioxidant, but they also are a fragrance ingredient. So keep that in mind whether you dig on fragrance or not. And then the other thing is this Bix Active. So I did a little bit of searching and I found the manufacturer of the Bix Active and it's a company called BASF Personal Care. So it's based in a combo of something called Bixa Oralana Seed Extract and Maltodextrin. The company says specifically it helps to decrease sebaceous gland activity. So the oil that comes out of your pores, pore size and skin imperfections while maintaining skin hydration and mattifying the skin. So this is a major ingredient in this foundation. On their website, they did say that they did a study and they specifically found that this complex is especially good for African skin. So the two parts of it, let's start with maltodextrin. It's basically a sugar. And as a sugar, it does have good moisturizing and hydrating properties. And then let's get into this Bixa stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the Bixa extract. It's an annatto tree extract. I feel like with skincare and makeup and stuff, they like find a bush or a shrub and they're like, let's analyze it and see if it has any good skincare properties, like random shrub on the side of the road kind of thing. I, I don't know if annatto tree is a random shrub on the side of the road. What I do know though, it is absolutely freaking beautiful. And it can also be used as a red pigment, which I thought was kind of cool. When you look at those red flowers, it's like, it's absolutely stunning. Based on the scientific makeup, it could have antioxidant properties, but I personally, with my limited access, couldn't find any specific studies. That doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't exist. I just personally couldn't find them. But if it works, it sounds great. It sounds like it would be wonderful. The thing is, is it's like the annatto tree and the maltodextrin, I don't see how that goes into equating to no oil and pore size and all that. I don't get it. Maybe there's something else in this complex that they just don't release publicly. I just don't know. I, I just wanna give you the information and you can do with it what you will. Because I'm testing the foundation, I'm not gonna put on any concealer because I want you to be able to see at the end of the day how this looks on my face and, not, and know that it's not a concealer, it's the actual foundation. I'm just gonna go ahead and do my brows really quickly and I'll be right back. So now let's talk about the Kosas 10 Second Eye Gel Watercolor 
eyeshadow. So what I'm supposed to do with this is I am supposed to swipe this on one eye at a time, wait five to 10 seconds, and then tap. Don't rub, it specifically says, with your finger or an eyeshadow brush. So that's what we are going to do. This is something I probably should have done with the face now and in hindsight. It's been a while since I've done one of these reviews. I'm just gonna put eye primer on one side. Since I do have two sides, I could have put face primer on one side of my face, but I did not do that. I'm not gonna be able to talk about the ingredients while I'm counting because I cannot multitask like that. Wait, am I supposed to spread it all over? I think I am. I'm gonna paint it all over. And then we're gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like crap right now, but let us pat. That looks way better than it did a second ago. <laughs> Okay, remember this is called watercolor, so it's not, I'm imagine you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to be super opaque, it's just like a wash of watercolor, and I think that looks really pretty. And it's drying down now, it's almost dry. So there we go, let's do the other side. I can definitely see why it's called watercolor. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's definitely just a wash of color. If you look at the two sides, you can see on the primer side, it looks more opaque. And I think that's because of the primer that I use. I use the Ulta Eye Primer. So when I swatch it by itself, you can see right here, I'm not trying to flick you off, sir, but that. Um, but you can see it's got kind of a my skin color tint. So I think that's why this side looks more opaque than this side. As far as ingredients go with this, again, it's got a water base, which is nice uh, because it's gonna have some humectants later on. They're gonna pull that water into the skin. But the second ingredient in this is orange extract, which may have some vitamin C antioxidant properties to it. But again, it is also a fragrance. So you have to take that into consideration whether you want fragrance in your skincare or not. Alcohol to help the product dry down. There's silica, which is gonna help it to be smooth. It could also be oil absorbing. And then we get to the humectants that's gonna pull the water into the skin to keep your skin hydrated. Then we get in some really nice moisturizers. We have uh, shea butter, which is also gonna act as an occlusive to lock in the water into your lids so that your lids don't dry out. And finally, the last one I wanna mention is the jojoba seed oil, which is a nice skin balancing ingredient. So overall, there really is some nice skincare in this product, especially if you have dry patches on your lids, uh, if your lids tend to be dry, this might add actually have some good skincare for you in there. And if your lids are oily, the skin balancing also may help you as well. And then with the silica, you may have some oil absorbing. So really, this is going to be a really nice product, hopefully, for people with especially dry, especially oily, and even people like myself who don't have one or the other. And it is a really pretty product. If you're looking for something with a lot of punch, you're probably not gonna get it with this, but you're probably not gonna be attracted to the marketing for it anyway. All right, let's go ahead and do the Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water Mascara. I've been very interested in this brand since we talked about it in What's Been Makeup, and I found out that it was started by Wendy Zomnier, who also started Urban Decay, and it's just kind of a fun, lighthearted brand. It is a tubing mascara, so that means that it's going to hopefully wash away, and I am going to test that as far as its ability to wash away at the end of the day. We'll do that at the wear test. Tubing mascaras really are fun because they don't typically make a big mess, mush, mushy mess all over your eyes. They're typically really easy to remove. So directions say to apply with light strokes, building until you get the volume, curl, and length desired. All right, I have never used this before. I had it in my drawer. I have no idea where I got it from, but I figured we would try it. So the idea behind this thing is that you're supposed to do this and it's supposed to stop you from getting mascara on your lid. And since I'm not not wearing eyeliner today, I want to have something to protect my eye because I will always <laughs> get la get on mascara on my lids. So let's let's try it and see how it goes. Nee Ooh, look at that! And it also kind of helps you to see what's happening too. I can't get to my outer lashes. I'm gonna have to take this thing away in order to do that. But you can really see what's happening there. Bam. Uh, so right now it looks very natural. Let's see if I can get it to build a little bit. This is actually really nice because I don't have to worry about messing it up. I wonder where I got this thing from. If you know where I got this thing from because you have it or you've seen it, let me know. I have no idea. 
that actually looks really cool. All right, let's do one more coat. The major touted ingredient in this is the argan oil. And the idea behind the argan oil is that it is supposed to help your lashes to be more moisturized and help them to, some people claim, to grow longer. So I looked and I looked and I looked for evidence of that actually being real in science. And most of the things that I found were just people talking about it. Like, oh my gosh. And as far as any science that I found, I only found argan oil as an ingredient by itself and what it might do by itself. So what I would do, in my opinion, instead of taking a mascara that has argan oil and like counting on it, is to talk to your ophthalmologist or your optometrist and be like, hey, I kind of want to do this and then just do the argan oil by itself. Um, you can find less expensive argan oils than this mascara. I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, it's probably not going to hurt to have the argan oil in there, but I wouldn't use that as like a selling point. Like, I want that mascara because it has the argan oil, you know? You know what, I'm just going in. This thing's starting to annoy me. It's making my lashes clump together because I can't properly wiggle. And we'll just hope that I don't make a mess. So after three coats on both eyes, I definitely see more length than volume. I definitely see the darkening, you know, as being the most prominent thing. I think if you already have voluminous lashes, you'll probably like this because I do feel like I'm getting more length than anything else. Um, so, so far, I feel like it's kind of, for me, that needs length and volume, kind of a, like a six or a seven on the scale of how much I'm digging on this mascara. At this point, it would not be a repurchase just because I don't, it doesn't fit all of my needs, like I need the volume. <laughs> and this just doesn't do it. And the thing is, is it's marketed as a volumizing mascara, but I'm just not getting that. And then onto the face, the only other product we're going to super focus on today is the brand new Rare Beauty Warm Wishes Effortless Bronzer Stick. It does come in five shades. Uh, you're supposed to twist the bronzer stick to reveal the product. It's already revealed when you open the thing, but I guess if you've used it, you need to twist it. Apply anywhere you'd like to see warmth to build dimension and definition, swipe onto the cheekbones, forehead, and chin, then blend with the fingertips, brush, or a sponge and it says you can even apply it to your eyelids for a warm wash of color so I'm just going to apply this to like my blushy areas and I'm also gonna do a little bit of forehead and I'm just gonna blend it with my fingertips because I find that to be the easiest thing I've got these little bumps on my head like I feel like I like almost like my forehead like indents here and then bumps out on the sides so when I do contour my forehead it's usually at the like on those bumps because of the shape of my face. And I'm just gonna blend that with my fingertips because who wants to dirty a brush if you don't have to, right? I don't wanna get to the middle. I wanna keep it to the outside. See how it's, it's blending absolutely beautifully. And then I'm just gonna warm that up a little bit. I mean, it's so pretty on the skin. It really is, it's beautiful. Since I'm not gonna be wearing blush today, I'm gonna do a second layer just on my cheeks. I really think this is pretty. This is gonna be beautiful in the summertime. I'll put a little on my nose too, just because I can. So with the ingredients for this, it's honestly not very exciting because all it really is is just the texture that makes the product be what it is. <laughs> you know, things, emollients and, and things that just make it, you know, the, the, the pigment blend in and all that. Skincare wise, it's really not very exciting. There is some meadow foam seed oil in here, which is potentially an antioxidant, but they're probably using it more for texture than anything. But then it does have one of my favorite oils in here, which is sunflower seed oil, which seems super basic, but it really is a nice moisturizing oil for the skin. There is gardenia fruit extract in here, which is an antioxidant, but again, also fragrance. So keep that in mind if you're not a fragrance person. So not too skin carry looking in here. I mean, it's fine. It's fine as far as that. More I'm looking for the performance that I'm looking for skincare from this. It says swipe on, blend, and go, and I think I have done that. <laughs> By the way, this was my Sephora bag when I went, and like I appreciate the more eco-friendly bag, but at the same time, like I kind of like feeling bougie when I go to Sephora, so I'm torn that I just got like a boring paper bag. Like, I also got this as a free sample and I didn't realize it until I came down here to film. I was like, oh, I'll put this on my lips. So this is the Ilia Lip Wrap Hydrating Mask. And I'm just gonna use that as my lip for today. It feels oily, but it feels good. This is too small. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture of it and blow it up because I can't see it, it's too small, it's tiny. Boop, 
Now I can look at it and zoom it in. So it looks like it has mango butter, so that's nice and moisturizing. Um, a lot of just texture stuff. There's some shea butter, some beeswax, aroma, which is perfume, coconut oil. I mean, it looks fine. I don't think that based on the ingredients of it, this is something I would just like run out and be like, yes, I must have that, that looks amazing. And it looks fine and it feels good, it feels nice. I'm sure it'll be good for my lips. Let me go ahead and take this down. And I think my head's gonna look a little bit more natural once I pull this down maybe. Maybe I put on too much, did I put on too much? At least off, off the monitor, it looks a little more natural looking now that I've rubbed my head a little bit. So this is my natural makeup look of the day. And we're gonna do a full on wear test. I'll come back at the end of the night and show you what, how everything wore. Uh, but until then, I'm gonna take you on my day with me because yesterday was Marshmallow Monday and today is Tuesday when I do a little bit of YouTube and a little bit of marshmallows. So come on my marshmallow journey with me. <laughs> time to sort out all the fights yeah. to sort out all the lies oh baby yeah oh, no. there was a part of me that knew that and still i'm caught by surprise oh. i thought you'd always be mine oh yeah i guess our dreams fell asleep there's no passion in the comatose yeah. baby going down 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 yeah. baby going down 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 yeah. tried so hard to stay afloat yeah we keep moving like the river goes yeah. I'm about to drive. I just wanted to show you the way this looks in natural light. I think it looks really pretty. Just like super, like I'm not wearing makeup, but I'm wearing makeup look. Um, I do think that the eye with the primer though definitely looks better. Definitely. But yes, I'm digging on this. I might wear this more often. Thought we had it covered Was gonna patch up all the scars yeah. But we smashed up all the all parts right. So let's check and see the mask And see Oh, looking pretty good And I didn't even set it So maybe just because it's such a um, Such a light coverage Maybe that's why I mean But I definitely have product on my face And my mask is still clean There's a little tiny tiny bit on the nose area Where I like pushed it But looks pretty good things have been very slow in the marshmallow arena right now it's been very slow but that's actually been a really good thing because i was getting my ass kicked during the holiday season specifically the christmas season oh my gosh i was dying <laughs> it was like ah! but now i get time to innovate and i get to create things and i get to work on future projects i think the best thing about doing a home-based food business versus a cosmetic business is that i get to just rely on myself which kind of is like a blessing and it's a curse kind of thing and that you are only relying on yourself but i don't have to wait for other people to do their thing like i I just do all of the things and if it doesn't get done it's because I didn't do it I'm not waiting on someone so that's really nice except for like when I order things obviously like when I order packaging I'm waiting for it to be shipped and all that but as far as the actual product like I'm the one who gets to make that happen which is super freaking cool and I would not trade that for anything it is really fun all right I'm going home and I'm working on Valentine's Day marshmallows I'm excited to show you how that's gonna work out because I'm very excited about the Valentine's Day products that we're gonna have oh. Oh, na, na, na. always knew that you were stubborn but didn't know it'd be so hard to figure out who you really are Just thought I should let you know, yeah, now, no, 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 no,
All right, the hearts are filled. Now the marshmallow needs to set and then I will pour melted chocolate over the back, seal them up, and then I'll decorate the tops. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to that today because I have to make dinner and then I'm going to ukulele over at my friend Mary Lynn's house. So yeah, not sure if we're gonna get to that today. This is the white chocolate version. So this is what the dark chocolate ones are gonna look like. It's just, you know, different color. And then on the back, you can see that it's sealed on the back and then nutrition facts and all of that good stuff. I just finished cleaning up down in my other kitchen, the marshmallow kitchen, and now I'm back in my family dinner kitchen and it's time to make dinner. <laughs> It's like, it'd be nice to sit down for a couple minutes, but if I want to be on time for ukulele, I need to cook. If you do not know, I get Home Chef, which is a food subscription service. I get a few of those meals and then I go grocery shopping and get the rest of the dinners, but freaking love Home Chef. I used to be sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by them any anymore, but uh, I still order it and it's still fabulous. Uh, I will put my customer referral link down below. Uh, I get money off my meals and you get money off your meal if you decide to try it, um, but it's not like an affiliate link. It's just like the regular customer referral link. <laughs> Right, dinner was delish. I'm now on my way to my friend Mary Lynn's house, but I'm having an issue in that I've used my phone so much today with the videoing and all of that, that my battery is at like 2%. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to video if anything at ukulele. Um, and I don't think you can really see my makeup right now. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but yeah. Uh, I was noticing a little bit of flaking with my mascara. Um, and it's, it's just this lighting so bad, we can't tell. I'll get back on my lighting later and you'll be able to see it better. But I'm running a few minutes late because I was doing the dishes, so I'm leaving <laughs> now. I'm going, <laughs> I'm late. Ah! Okay, I know this is very anticlimactic, but <laughs> my friend just had foot surgery and I just felt weird asking them if I could videotape them, so I did. So now I am on my way home and we're gonna do the check-in right now. Day is done. Woo! That was a busy day. So let's go ahead and let's zoom in and we will see how the makeup wore. All right, let us look and see. Okay, so what I'm seeing as far as the eyeshadow is that this one has creased right there. This one looks, it doesn't look smooth. Um, but I wouldn't say it looks bad. I think in my magnification mirror, it looks chunkier than what it would look like to like someone looking at me from a distance. I think basically what I'm saying is I don't think anybody would notice but me. So the primer eye, it definitely stayed on better. So if you're going to buy this, I would definitely recommend using an eye primer with it because the lasting power is definitely better. Look at the difference. 
The mascara, I definitely got some flaking. You can see it here, no smudging, but I will tell you, I very rarely have any kind of smudging. Uh, so yeah, just a little bit of flaking there. As far as the bronzer, I can definitely still see it, but it's faded. It's been about nine hours, so I would say it lasted pretty well. I did wear a mask for a portion of the day, so we'll take that into account. I think I see it more on my right cheek than I do my left cheek. Uh, I don't see it quite as much on my head, but I also blended it in a little bit more there. I, I applied more to my cheeks. So yeah, I would say I'm pretty happy with the bronzer with the way that it's lasted. As far as the foundation goes, I don't see anything weird happening. I don't see any, let's look at my fine lines. <laughs> this is what I do to test my, my fine line wrinkles. I just go like this, wonk, and see if I see lines. And I do not, well, maybe the teeniest, tiniest little bit of caking up in my fine lines, well, wrinkles, let's just be honest. Just a little bit, but I don't think anybody would notice unless they were looking up close. And I think that's part because I only use the lightest coverage. I could have built this up more, but I didn't. So I think if I built it up more, you might see a little bit more in the creases there. Maybe what I'll do, because I feel like like I still have an evening of my skin tone happening, but I don't know how much I have. So maybe what I'm gonna do is why don't I take a makeup wipe and I'm gonna remove half of this and see how much I still have on my face. I am not a makeup wipe person, but I do keep some around mostly for removing swatches. So let me go ahead and just see. Of course, I still have a bunch on, but I wanna see what the difference is between the two sides if I remove one side. Yeah, there's definitely a significant amount that was left on my face. But like, does this side look like the way that it did when I first put it on? Absolutely not. But again, keep in mind, I didn't put on a primer. So if I put on a primer, I may have a longer lasting time. This is how much foundation was removed from this side. I did mention that I was going to show you the removal of the mascara to see if the tubing mascara worked with just warm water. So let's do that right now. All right, welcome to my other bathroom. <laughs> I let the water get warm, so we'll see how this goes. All right, here we go. This is supposed to remove with just warm water. So far, not so much. Okay, now it's flaking off. Now we got it. We got something going on here now. Just needed a second to break down. Let's see, did it remove? Yep, look at that. See how there's no mess? It's just gone. Oops, I'm covering the camera. <laughs> but like, it's gone. And it didn't smudge and smear all over my face. So that's a too big mascara. That's what it's supposed to do, yay! <laughs> All right, my half made up face. <laughs> we are going to give the final thoughts, final review on all these products. Remember, I have been trying these for about a week and a half. I've tried them multiple times and this is kind of how I'm feeling. I will continue to use these and I'm sure that some of them at least will be back in a favorites and fails countdown. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the foundation, I absolutely love this. I've used it with primer, I've used it at medium coverage. Today I used it at light coverage with no primer. I liked it that way as well. It is a very versatile product. I haven't seen any breaking up on my skin. It's just absolutely beautiful. You know I'm on a search for a dupe for my La Mer that I don't have to spend so much money on the La Mer foundation again. I would not say this is it, uh, just because this one I honestly like, for what I personally like, kind of like it a little better for my day to day. I do think the La Mer looks prettier on camera. I feel like it gives me more of a flawless look. Even at a medium coverage, I feel like this doesn't quite give me what the La Mer does. But on a day to day, like not trying to be in front of a bunch of lights, this is beautiful. <laughs> it is absolutely gorgeous. It wears beautifully. Uh, I am still wearing it on this half of my face. I only cleaned off this side. Um, so you can see it is still there, but it's just, it's barely there at this point. But I do think that's due to me putting on so little. So overall, yes, absolutely recommend if this is what you're looking for. If you're looking for something that's more medium to full coverage, you might wanna pass on it.
the bronzer stick. I really like this. I found this to be very easy to use, very easy to blend. I personally just need to work on my skill on my forehead bronzing just because I don't do it very often. So I just need to get better at that. Uh, but I really like the way it looked on my skin. I really like the way it blended. It has a decent lasting power, not fabulous, but decent. And I found that every time that I've used it so far. Uh, and it is a really nice product. It's probably one of my favorite bronzing products that I own as of now. Now, uh, it's just it's just a good solid bronzing stick and the way that it looks so natural on the skin the mascara I like it I don't love it and what I was saying earlier about I'm just looking for a little bit more volume than what this can give me I do love how easy it was to remove I think that's fabulous I hate just spending forever scrubbing my eyes scrubbing my eye trying to get my mascara off and this was so easy to remove uh, and I do really like the length of it I just need a little little bit more to make it look like I have more lashes. I need it to be a little bit, not clumpy of a formula, but clumpy at the base. I need it to make my lashes look thicker and this just didn't do that. But it, overall, it is a decent mascara. It's just not the best. And finally, the Kosas eyeshadow. I think that for the right person, this is going to be great. I don't think I'm going to purchase more of these, but I'm honestly not surprised. Uh, it's just, it's not oomphy enough for me to buy more of them, even though I am happy to have this one. This is going to be really nice for days like today where I'm, you know, just kind of doing things with my friends at home, working, things like that, where I would just want something nice and light. This is perfect for that. It's very easy to use uh, and it's pretty relatively error proof. If you don't want to use a primer though, you probably want to pass on this. But if you are used to using a primer and you want something that's really natural looking, you're probably really going to love this. One thing I do want to find out because I haven't used this quite as much is I want to find out how this plays with other eyeshadows. I have not tested that yet. yet. So if that I get any new information about that, I will let you know in a favorites and fails countdown. So overall, I'm really happy with my purchases from Sephora this month and I would love to at this point hear from you in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it if you've tried any of these products i would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below thank you for coming on my day with me i hope that you enjoyed kind of seeing some of the things i do when i'm not on youtube i had a lot of fun bringing you with me if you would like to hang out a little longer because you know maybe you just haven't hung out with me long enough youtube should be recommending a couple of videos for you right over here to watch but if it it is your time to go. It is absolutely no problem at all. Thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. And that love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.